everybody. Ho, ha, ho. Welcome to the glory gathering. Ho, are you hungry for the glory? Yeah. Ho, ha. John and I were in prayer uh, this afternoon before we came, and the glory of God settled on us so strong we could barely move for, oh, at least a half hour, 45 minutes. It was a great, great time. Uh, so I'm expecting oh, uh, an abundance of the glory to fall on everyone. We, we just got through praying. We prayed for the nation and all the different things we prayed for uh, for a couple of hours. And now we're getting ready to really just enter into uh, hearing the word of God, but then releasing the glory. So before I start anything, I just want to release the glory, all right? I just, oh, ha, so that as you hear the word and receive the word, you're going to receive it in the glory. Oh, then at the end, after worship, I will go and I will release the glory on every single person individually, okay? Oh, ha. so Father, in the name of Jesus, I release your glory. Oh, ha, flood your children with your glory. Ho, oh, oh. ho, let your presence fall upon every single one. Let your presence wrap around every single one. Ho, oh, that as we are submerged in your glory, we hear your word. Ho, oh, oh. we allow you to touch us deeply and change us with your word. I thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 John, would you like to share your... Yeah. I'm going to show you this. Uh, this is a picture of the nail that the Lord spoke to me, and I, I wrote all this down. But you can go to my website, johnrigneyministries.com, and you can find it there, and you're able to read all through this. This is such a powerful, prophetic... Go ahead, John. <laughs> Come on. Read it to us. <laughs> Before we went live, she's like, you can read it. No, no, no. I'm just going to give them the website. No, no. Read it. No, no, no. We're going to do the website. <laughs> so uh, I've been outvoted. I guess I'm going to read it. <laughs> all right. So this is called, this is from the nail's perspective during the crucifixion. It started just like every other day. There I was in a hand woven basket waiting to deliver judgment to the guilty. After all, I'm just a nail. I've tasted a lot of men's blood. I've always known the truth. I can taste their bitterness, anger, rage, and guilt. I am the only one who knows the truth because a man cannot hide his guilt. It flows through his veins. Yet there is something different about this day. All I could taste was love, forgiveness, and acceptance. If I could cry out and tell the people that this man was truly innocent, I would have. But I couldn't, because after all, I'm just a nail. As I held up this man for hours and felt his life slowly slipping away, I realized instead of holding up judgment, I was holding up righteousness. For after all, I'm just a nail. Amen. It's powerful. So powerful. Yeah. So powerful. You can find that on the website. There's, there's bookmarks there as well um, that work fantastic. Um, and also, you know, so many of you have reached out with your, with your prayer requests and have partners with us or have even given an offering. So thank you for that. That's on the website. And then the drop down menu, uh, we just added. Um, a spot to uh, for a booking. If anyone wants that, you know, me to bring the prophetic. My wife does awesome worship. You guys can put a booking inquiry in there on the website as well. And that's something that's coming up uh, June 16th. Right. We're going to be ministering in Virginia, Minnesota. And uh, if you go to our, my website, donnarigme.org, you can pull up the events and you can find the details if you're in Minnesota or want to go to that. And John's going to be ministering with yep. me, and Jennifer's wife yep. is going to be helping out with worship. Yep. Awesome. So they're on the road. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, also on my website, I have uh, a three CD set on soaking in the glory. So if anybody's interested in learning more about the glory and how to soak and marinate in the glory and the benefits of soaking in the glory, that's in that. And then I also have two prophetic books. One is called Divine Encounters, where the Lord brought me to hell and to heaven. And so I recount in detail everything that I saw, both places. And uh, then he continued taking me to heaven, so I wrote a sequel, which is called The Glory of God Revealed. And this book is all about the glory and what I saw in heaven and what's coming to the earth. 
on when the glory is poured out. Have also have another book called Abused by the Church for people that have been wounded by the church and how to get healing from that and how to really walk in forgiveness and reconnect safely back to a, a good church. All right? So that's DonnaRigney.org. All right? Awesome. We're ready? We are ready to go. We're ready to go. We we're both hearing a similar message. Mm -hmm. So you want to start us tonight with what you feel that God is showing you. Yeah. And then I'll chirp in. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm really feeling like um, the place that we've all been in the past few years has just been really, really tough. And that the Lord wants you to know that you're not abandoned. And that he's got some promises for you that I'm going to read through scripture. And this is where we are at. Is We're coming out of this place where, um, you know, some of you are feeling desperate. Some of you are in a, you know, oh my, oh my God, what's going to happen to my life place moment. Um, but I'm going to tell you something that that is going to end very quickly. And what we're stepping into, I believe, very soon by the end of the summer or even sooner, is this place where God has promises for his children and that he, he does not just leave us as orphans and he doesn't abandon us. If, if the world system crumbles, God's system still remains. Amen? Amen? Amen. And so as, as children of God, the, I believe the Lord wants us to enter into a, a, a new place in our faith and our belief that as the government and our economy and the world, as that goes, we don't have to follow suit with that. We can begin to believe differently. You know, before I read the scripture, it's about the Israelites. They received everything from their Egyptian masters. They received their clothes and their food and whatever provision they had. They received everything from them. And so when they left Egypt... They left all of that opportunity to get all that stuff from Egypt. So what God did was God showed them that when he replaces it with what he has for you, it never wears out. It never breaks down. Amen? Amen. And so I want to challenge you tonight to start to believe God for, oh, look, there's one of those bookmarks. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, you can always... Trust in God. You put your trust in God. Don't put your trust in man. And don't put your trust in paper. Money is just paper. It's here today, gone tomorrow. But you put your trust in God. And God will give you all the provision. In Nehemiah, oh boy, where's those glasses I cleaned? Here they are. I tried to do it without the spectacles. <laughs> Everything was just one big blur. Oh, it's all being, it's all clearer now. In Nehemiah chapter 9, starting in verse 19, so that you can go here and read this on your own, and you could prophesy this over your life. Because of your great compassion, speaking of the Lord, you did not, oh, sorry, you did not abandon them in the wilderness. How many of you here, has God not abandoned you? Raise your hand, or if you're watching at home, if God has not abandoned you. So that's the first promise that you can hold on to, that you can remind God of. Lord, because of your faithfulness, you have never abandoned me. By day, the pillar of cloud did not fail to guide them on their path. See, God was there every step of the way, just like he is with you and I. He's there every step of the way. And sometimes the enemy paints such a picture that's so overwhelming of how are we going to get through this? How are we going to manage? How are we going to move forward? How are we going to live? And God says, I, I didn't paint that picture. The picture I painted is this. Is that even though they were, they were taken out of Egypt, the place that they, they knew everything about, and they were thrown into the wilderness... I provided for them. I provided for them a cloud. And then, nor the pillar of fire by night to shine on the way that they were to take. So there was the, the cloud during the day and the pillar of fire by night. 
You gave your God, you gave your good spirit to instruct them. We have the Holy Spirit that instructs us, right? Mm -hmm. That speaks to us. You did not withhold your manna from their mouths. You gave them the, the, the water for their thirst. How many of you have not had food or water in several, several days? How many have not had that? See, no one's raising their hand. If you're at home, you've had food and water. So God takes care of you. I get it. Maybe your cupboards are overflowing as much as you would like. But if, but if you, if you've had what you've needed, God has supplied. He has supplied your need. And we live, just a quick side note, do you know that we live in a country that is full of, like, uh, I don't want to use the word gluttony, but I almost do. In overabundance. How much stuff do we throw away? We, we live in a throwaway society. You can't get anything fixed nowadays. You can't get your TV fixed. You just throw it away and get another one. You can't get anything fixed nowadays. It's just washing machines. If my washing machine lasts me one year, I, I am just, thank you, Lord. Because they don't la nothing lasts. But, and sometimes that gets on us. That we need to have this overabundance, overabundance. When God says, let me just supply your needs. Let me supply what you need and be happy with that. Trust me in that. And then if God decides that he wants to pour in more, let him pour in more. But at least if you have your needs met, you have to know that God is doing that for you. And you have to thank him for that. And let God bring in the surplus of supply, but be grateful that you have what you need today. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Because Amen. the Israelites weren't a grateful people. No. And that's what kept them out of the promised land. So let's be grateful for what we have. I'm sure God hears all our prayers all the time of what we need and what we want. But let's be grateful because we serve a God that is so good. Amen. For 40 years, you sustained them in the wilderness. They lacked nothing. Say that with me. They lacked nothing. nothing. Their clothes did not wear out, nor did their feet become swollen. Imagine that. That's awesome. You gave them kingdoms and nations, allotting to them even the remotest, even the uh, remotest frontiers. So it didn't matter. God gave them everything that they needed. Their shoes didn't even wear out. My wife wouldn't like that. <laughs> because she loves shoes. But could you imagine having your shoes and your clothes never wearing out? But these are things that God promises. These things can last. Like, the, like you, you gave the testimony of your cell phone. Let me know when you start doing that over your car with the gasoline. I'm going to have you pray for every car in the parking lot. <laughs> but you can believe God for these things. Amen? He wants to take care of you. And sometimes when things don't go the way we want them to go, it's an opportunity for us to have our faith strengthened. It's an opportunity God uses those times so that we draw closer to him. It's hard not to hit the panic button and not to lose faith or lose control or get all upset. And part of that is part of the process because we're humans. Yeah. There's, sometimes there's no avoiding that, but there is avoiding the extreme. You can be upset and you can you know, have an emotional moment, but just let it be a fleeting thing. Don't let the enemy rob from you what God's trying to do. And just be grateful in where you're at and what God has given you because there's more to come. And this that I read to you is what we're heading into. That God is going to begin to pour this out on his people because we don't have to live under the rule of this world. In that sense. We can believe God for everything. We don't need to rely on man for everything or the government for everything or our boss for everything. We rely on God for everything. Amen? So we're coming out of that season like the Israelites came out of Egypt, we're coming out of this season that we've been in, and now we can begin to expect God for more, for greater, greater measures of anointing, greater authority. All those things, keep them on your list. Amen. Amen.
That goes right along with what the Lord spoke to me. He said, fire from heaven will fall soon on this world. So we're talking about provision in the natural, but God's talking about provision in the supernatural. Yeah. And he's saying fire from heaven will fall very soon on the whole world. And he was speaking to me during the week, and he said, a lot of times when I get come before you to minister, fire comes all over me. Oh, he said, first the fire comes, then the glory. Oh, the fire makes way for the glory. Oh, his fire purges us and cleanses us. Huh? Oh, so that we're made ready for the glory to come pouring on us. He says, fire from heaven is coming very soon. And it's going to be poured out all over the world. Amen. And then he said, it will ignite cold, dry hearts into a blazing, fiery passion for us. When his fire falls, it's going to ignite hearts that were cold, that were indifferent to God, had no faith in God. Oh, when you feel the fire of God, the presence of God, it changes everything. People that have an encounter with God, it changes everything. For me, uh, the first time I ever had an encounter with God, I was seven years old and I was in church. And I was just kneeling down during the mass. And I was reading my missal, and all of a sudden, I left the church in the spirit. I just went into heaven, and I saw Jesus. And Jesus came to me, and he started talking to me about everything that concerned me in my life as a seven-year-old. The kids that were making fun of me at school and <laughs> singing songs about me and, you know, things like that. Things that were going on at home. And he just talked to me about those things. And then... It was time to sit down in the Mass, and I was still kneeling because I was gone. I was in heaven with Jesus. So the nun that was behind me tapped me on the shoulder because I was the only one kneeling. I should have been sitting. And so she brought, pulled me right out of the Spirit, and Jesus was gone. I was like, no! <laughs> and that changed my whole life. From that point on to now, I've been seeking after Jesus. It just takes one encounter huh, with Jesus. One encounter with the fire of God. Oh, it, for our loved ones that don't know Jesus, pray for that for them. Pray that they have an encounter that absolutely transforms them. Oh, because once you meet Jesus, I fell in love with him. I always thought God was, I believed in God as a child. I thought he was high in the sky. Just looking down, watching to see when I made a mistake. And if I made a mistake, I'd be in trouble. That was my perception of who God was. I met Jesus and I realized he loved me. He knew me. He cared about me. He was concerned about all the things I was concerned about. And when I realized that, I fell in love with him. And that's what happens when the fire of God falls. People fall in love with Jesus. And you don't have to make them serve him. You don't have to make them follow him. Oh, uh, you can't keep them away oh, from following him. Uh, so much so that when I went into high school, I went into a Catholic high school. And before class, I would take the bus, the, the regular bus, to the city and go to the high school. But before high school, I would go to mass every day. Now, this is I'm a teenager in high school, and I, I wanted Jesus again. After I met him, I was like, I'm going to meet him again. And I just per kept pursuing him and pursuing him. So I'm in high school every day, going to mass. And then I started going to dances um, after school at the, a boys' high school, which your father was going to. <laughs> and I met Jack. <laughs> And so Jack and I started dating, but I still was pursuing Jesus. And so I graduated from high school, and, and I was like, met with Jack, and I said, Jack, I'm sorry, I have to tell you, but I'm going to go in the convent because i got to seek after Jesus. That was to the degree that I wanted Jesus, that I literally left and went and joined the convent for two and a half years. Because that, back when I was a kid, that was the only way you could find God. You had to be a priest or a nun. 
And so I did that. But after two and a half years, I was like, yeah, I'm out of here. <laughs> Jesus isn't here either. You got tired of eating oatmeal and porridge. <laughs> yeah. Having your head shaved. <laughs> yeah, right, all that stuff. But then I got back with Jack, and God's plan unfolded. But that's what happens when you meet Jesus. It is life-changing. And he's saying, I am going to change this world by pouring my fire, my glory, my presence out on all flesh. In the last days, huh? I will pour my spirit out on all flesh. But nothing else, everything else is just minuscule compared to his love, his presence, his glory. Oh, and once people encounter him, they're never the same. And God's saying, that's coming. This is what I'm going to do. Oh, Amen? He said, this world will take to the streets and dance to celebrate all that we do for them. Oh, ha. And I've seen that in the spirit where the, the Holy Spirit's taken me over the United States and I have seen the future and I've seen people in the streets rejoicing, worshiping, praising God. This huge, massive wow. events just in the streets. That's coming. This is what God is going to do. The enemy overplayed his hand by doing all that he's done with COVID, with the stolen election, oh, ha, with the corruption in government, oh, ha, with we've suffered financially, we've suffered with our health, we've suffered in so many ways. What it's done is caused us to be more hungry for God. It's caused us to be seeking right. hard after him. We're like a bunch of dry sticks. Oh, uh, ready for the fire to fall on us. All right? He said, oh, uh, fear nothing. Don't be afraid of anything. This time of change will bring forth many delightful things. He said, you will celebrate what your God does for you. So we're going to come into a time of great, great celebration. This, right. We're, we're just on the brink of it. Like the Israelites. When they were released from captivity, from slavery, oh, they danced. Miriam led them in a wonderful, wonderful dance after they crossed the Red Sea. They were free. Oh, and they celebrated their freedom. What John is showing us is that when we get this freedom, when we get this great outpouring, keep gratitude in our heart for God. Huh? Be grateful for the little things. Be grateful for everything in our lives. Don't lose your relationship with him over stupid things. Yeah. We can get focused on stupid things. Right. Okay? Right. And then he, now I'm going to share this other thing before I share a scripture. Okay? He said, few sit with us and really know us and know what we think and what we are saying. So he was telling me that there's not that many people that really take the time to sit and get to know him. And he really needs us to do this in this hour. Because he's, he's told me that in this hour, he is only going to use people that really know him. Ho oh, ha! To lead his people. Because he doesn't want to be misrepresented. He was misrepresented for years uh, by the religious. And he wants us to know him so we can represent him as he truly is. So he's, he's reminding me that we need to have time with him. He said, only those who know us will represent us and declare our will and our ways to our children. So how many of us want to be used by God huh, mm. to declare his will and his ways? We got to know him. We got to make that sacrifice every day to spend time with him, to sit with him, to meditate on his word, listen to what he's saying to us. I journal, I write down everything he says. That's going to be a priority for all of us. He said, I will be dealing with the false prophets and the lazy, corrupt shepherds. In the days to come, judgment will fall on my house and on this world's leaders. You and those like you who know and follow us will be kept safe when I release the gavel of justice. None of the wicked will escape justice. So we're coming into a time when those who have not been following him and even our leaders in the world and in the church 
are going to experience the gavel of his justice is going to come down. Right. He said, at the same time, my faithful ones will receive their just rewards and great promotions. Encourage the faint-hearted to stay true, to stay faithful, and they will live blessed while watching the corrupt reap their punishments. And he said, persevere in righteousness. Now I'm going to share the scripture. Ooh, this is the scripture for the remnant. Okay? This is the scripture for those that have stayed faithful. This right. is the scripture of those that are seeking him. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. He said, seek me with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Seek me and everything you need I'll give to you. Yeah. Right. right? Oh, uh, and there's been those in this hour that maybe we weren't seeking him so hard before all these troubles began, but we are now. And there's an army that has risen up throughout the land that are really seeking God. And this is his promise to them. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now listen, this is Jeremiah 29, 11. Mm -hmm. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Amen. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Oh, right. uh, plans to give you hope and a future. Oh, uh, he's saying, those of you that have sought me, those of you ho oh, uh, that have made me a priority in your life, I'm going to give you a hope and I'm going to give you a good future. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. All right. Oh, uh, then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. It says when you ask me for something, I'm going to grant it. When you come before me and you pray for your loved ones, you're going to see me answer your prayers. And you know what? Some of you are already seeing him do it. It's already happening. You will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Amen. Lord. Oh, and then this is the word he gave me for those that have not been seeking him. So we're coming into a time like the Israelites when they left Egypt. They got set free. They got blessed. Right. God took care of them. What happened to the Israelites? The whole army was drowned in the Red Sea. Judgment fell on them. The Egyptians. Well, I say the Israelites. The Egyptians. All right. Oh, ha. This is what he said. Woe to the shepherds who are destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture. This is Jeremiah 23, starting in verse 1, declares the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to the shepherds who tend my people. This is leaders, not just spiritual leaders, but just leaders. Have we been dealing with corrupt leaders, corrupt judges, huh? Oh, corrupt politicians? Right. Okay? He's saying, this is what the Lord God says. Because you have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not bestowed care on them, I will bestow punishment on you for the evil you have done. Have we been excessively taxed? Yes. Huh? Yes. Have the price of everything gone through the roof? Yes. Everything is so costly. Yes. Huh? Have we been battling sickness? Have we been battling the effects of a vaccine? We've been battling a lot of things. Ho, oh, ha. Huh. Illegal, illicit, corrupt leaders have put upon us. Is God blind to it? No. Absolutely right. not. Right. He loves us. Right. Oh. He says, because you have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not bestowed care on them, I will bestow punishment on you for the evil you have done. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where you have driven them. Oh. I will place shepherds over them who will tend them. God mm. says there's going to be a change coming. I'm going to place shepherds in the church and in the world. Both. I'm going to give, place shepherds in place who will take care of my people. Is this what we've been praying for? Yeah. We've been praying for godly right. leaders. huh? <laughs> godly judges. huh? We're sick of it. <sighs> what we've been going through. Again, I'm going to read that. 
I, this is Jeremiah 23, verse 4. I will place shepherds over them who will tend them, and they will no longer be afraid or terrified, nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up David, a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. When I read that, I knew he was speaking prophetically of Donald Trump. He's saying, I am going to put Donald Trump back in. No matter how many rise against him, oh, no matter how many false indictments are put against him, no matter how much opposition, if I am for him, who or what could be against him? Right. Oh, I've called him, I've chosen him. He is a righteous man. He's a man with a heart after my heart. Oh, uh, he's gone through trial after trial after trial. Ho, oh, uh, oh, ho, and has not turned his back on me. Is God going to be faithful to him? You bet. He could have said, God, I'm serving you, and look at all the trouble. I'm serving your people. I forget it. I'm not doing this anymore. And he could have quit. He didn't. He stayed faithful. Right. And God sees the faithfulness in his heart. And God's saying, I'm going to bless that man. And I'm going to bless the nation that I put him over. All right? Yeah. I'm going to read that again. Oh, uh, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. Do we know that when Donald Trump gets back in, Israel's going to be okay? Right. It's a given. It's a given. And then I'm going to skip over to verse 11. Both prophet and priest are godless. Even in my temple, I find their wickedness, declares the Lord. Therefore, their path will become slippery. They will be banished to darkness, and they, they will fall. I will bring, bring disaster on them in the year they are punished, declares the Lord. Among the prophets of Samaria, I saw this repulsive thing. They prophesied by Baal and led my people, Israel, astray. Oh, I have seen something horrible. They commit adultery and live a lie. They strengthen the hands of evildoers so that not one of them turns from their wickedness. They are like Sodom to me, the people of Jerusalem, like Gomorrah. What's God saying to us? He's saying, for those of you that are faithful, for those of you that have been seeking hard after me, for those of you that have been following me, you will lack for nothing. You will have everything you need. My hand will be upon you. You will have a good future. But for those who have allowed the enemy to use them, oh, to hurt my people, to oppress my people, to enslave my people, judgment's going to fall. Judgment's going to come. Oh, they will be removed from those positions and replaced by godly leaders. Does God lie? No. This right. is what he's going to do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you're on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you know, inside the church, the Lord's looking for that heart of David yeah. inside the church. And you're, we're going to start to see people that are just going to come alive um, that are different than the everyday religious. It's going to be people that have a heart after God they might not have the exterior that might not look all religious, but they're going to have a heart after God. And the Lord's going to use them and speak through them. And if you've been in this place where you've been seeking God, but you've been really battling and having just a, a hard time just holding on to your faith and hope because of everything that's been going on, and maybe you've been saying things or even thinking things that, you know, you're not proud of or you wish... I wish I would have acted differently with that, or I wish I would have um, just had more positivity or believed God more. I, I kind of got taken up in the whole situation. You have to know that God looks at the heart of man. And I remember there was a time when I had to do a funeral for someone. It was a young man who 
committed suicide. And I knew that the family was going to ask me if that boy was going to be in heaven. And so I spent some time with the Lord because we can give a religious answer, but you want to give a God answer. And so I asked the Lord about it. And he didn't say anything to me for a few days. And then I remember I was driving down the road and the Lord said to me, do you know that I, I see and hear the heart of man? Yeah. And I said, I, I know you do, Lord. He said, let me ask you this. He said, when, if someone serves the Lord their whole life and they're on fire and even a preacher, an evangelist, and they get old, and let's say they get Alzheimer's. Has anyone ever met anyone that has deteriorated in Alzheimer's? How nasty they can become? So the Lord asked me. He said, they served me their whole life. They get Alzheimer's. They get mean and nasty. And then they die. What do I judge them on? And I thought. And then the Lord answered. He said, I judge the heart of man, not the mind of man. He said, so you tell those parents that he was tormented in his mind and he couldn't shake those thoughts of depression and suicide in his mind, but his heart was after me. Wow. 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 So what I'm saying to you is this. You might not show it all the time on the outside. You might make mistakes. You might have an anger issue that you have to deal with, that you have to get some deliverance for. You might have some addictions that you have to work through. You might have some negativity that you deal with. Whatever it is, you can name it. But seek God with your heart. And as you're seeking him out through those things, all of a sudden, healing will just happen. As you're struggling with those things in the, in the natural, but your heart is after God. See, the Bible says that you'll know the true shepherd because the shepherd will smell like the sheep. And that's what God is raising up. He's not raising up the perfect. He's not raising up the ones that look religious. I don't look religious. I'm glad I don't look religious. I'll never look religious. But my heart is after God. And the only thing that matters to me is that I smell like the sheep. And that I know how to help the sheep. And I know how to hug the sheep when they need a hug. Or pull them out of a mud pit when they're stuck. Or rescue them when the wolf is coming to devour them. It's all that matters. And that's what God's raising up. And that's you. That's you watching at home. Yeah. You're feeling it. Well, I've never really served God my whole life. How can I launch out and be a preacher? Because it's the calling God has on you. I didn't serve God my whole life either. But it was a calling. And it's always there. You just have to go apprehend it. And just go grab hold of it. So if your heart is beating out of your chest which I know it is. God has ministry for you. He has healing for you. Whatever it is that you feel that God's given you to do, don't turn around and look at where you've been and how you've acted. Look what God has for you going forward. Yeah, yeah. And those are the promises that we're stepping into today, that the Israelites stepped into, that their clothes didn't wear out, their shoes didn't wear out, their feet didn't hurt. Because their heart was after God. They served a God that they knew and they saw. And they saw how powerful he was. You've seen how powerful God is. Just love him. Just love him. And you know the Bible says that it is the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. Do you know that you will fix all your stuff once you fall in love? Because you'll say, God, you're too good to me. You shouldn't be because I'm nasty. Maybe I should get better. 
Lord, you're so good to me. I need to treat my wife and my children better, Lord, because you're so good to me. And that's what God does. He showers you with goodness when you're not worthy for it. And it changes you. So let him change you. Let him love you. Let him encourage you. Amen? Amen. But when, you know, when you were talking about the qualities of a shepherd, uh, that a good shepherd, a lot of times a a good shepherd um, doesn't look religious, you know, and um, gets in with the sheep and smells like the sheep. I, I, I felt like you were describing Donald Trump. (laughs) <laughs> when you see him at the rallies, huh? He, he's, he's in with the people, and if someone's having a difficulty, he stops everything and makes sure they're okay. And, and you know, he's personable, and he gets in with the people, and he cares about the people. And, and I feel like this is what God is doing in this hour. He's raising up good shepherds. People that aren't self-righteous, that don't play the part, and look the part a lot of times that maybe don't have the most perfect past. But God sees their heart. And he sees that there's love in their heart for him and for his people. And that's what he wants in this hour. People that really love him and love his people. That are willing to lay everything down to help his people because they love him and they love the people. And that's the kind of leaders, and I'm saying Donald Trump, but there's many others that God's going to be putting in positions that we don't want to look at them with our natural eyes and say, well, but if God's saying this, I'm picking this person because this person loves me and loves my people. Right. And will lay everything down for my people. Greater love has no man than that he lay down his life for his friend. That's the kind of love Jesus had for us. And that's the kind of love that God wants in the leaders he's going to be putting in positions, not just in the United States, but all over the world. That's what we're praying for. That's what we're believing for because the Holy Spirit's put it on us to pray that. And that is exactly what God's going to do. But God does things like nationally, but then he does things individually. And he's raising up shepherds here. In our midst, here, huh? those of you that are watching live stream, he's raising up shepherds who will care for his people, who will love his children, who will quickly forgive, who won't focus on the flaws of people, who will find the good and elevate that good and help people to to mature and grow and and get closer to God. He, He wants people of all ages, not just old people. And not just middle-aged people, young people, children even. Oh, he's going to be raising up leaders in this hour that have a heart of love for him and for his people. Huh? Want to take communion? Want to lead us in communion? We're going to take communion now. We'll have you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you. If you would stand with us, please. Let everybody stand. Everything we could ever possibly need is found right here in this communion. Every answer to every problem that you could ever ask any addiction that you are having such a hard time overcoming, anything that's going on in your life with relationships or your marriage or your children, or it does not matter. This is where all the answers are found, is where Jesus paid the ultimate price at the cross. You can hear a lot of different sermons on a lot of different topics, but this one always remains the same. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son. He loves you so much. He loves us so much. That he willingly died on that cross so that you and I can have our sins forgiven. 
we can have that relationship back with the Father. He made a way for us where there was no way. There was no hope. Jesus came and gave us hope. So Lord Jesus, we thank you for the price that you paid. We thank you that we're able to stand here tonight as imperfect people and receive communion, Lord, and ask you to forgive us for the sins that we've committed. Let's just take a moment before we take the body of Christ. Let's just take a moment and just lay those things down at the foot of the cross. Lay your mistakes down in your mind. Just see what they are. Give them a name if you have to in your mind. And just lay them at the foot of the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for paying the price for those sins that we just laid at your feet. We thank you for doing that for us. Let's eat. And the blood that he shed is the only thing that can cover our sins. It is the only thing that washes guilt away. This blood is so powerful. There is life in this blood. There is anointing in this blood. There is the ability to be healed. There's the ability for deliverance. There's the ability to have shackles broken off in this blood. We wash our minds with this blood. So we're able to see what he sees. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that we cover ourselves right now in your precious blood, Lord. We pray you wash away, wash away everything that's not of you. Wash away everything that's not of you, Lord. And we pray that you leave a stain behind of your blood for all to see, Lord Jesus, that we are truly your disciples. Let's drink. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to release the glory. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release your glory. Oh, oh. Let your glory flood every single one. Oh, oh. Let your glory flood our homes. I release your glory. Oh, be filled to overflowing with the glory of God. I release I release your glory, Lord. I release. Oh, oh, I release your glory. Oh, yeah. Flood us, Lord. Flood us with your glory. Overshadow us with your glory, Lord God. Oh, let your glory chase away. Oh, everything. Oh, oh, oh. False guilt, shame, fear. Oh, let your glory chase away. Oh, uh, all negative feelings we have about ourselves or others. Oh, let your glory chase away. Oh, unforgiveness and bitterness. Oh, uh, let your glory overtake us, Lord. Give us your goodness. Flood us with your goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen.